Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Together we are the Office Blokes. Yes, indeed. Aye. It is true. Back to uh, back to full power on a Monday afternoon. Yeah. In the rain. Sunny outside. Yeah. It's raining right when I went out before. Mm. I know. Yeah. Terrible. It's fine now. British people like to talk about the weather constantly, <laughs> all the time. Right. We did this channel the other day. It is Corridor Crew. Um, and it was the true scale of nuclear explosions. It was pretty terrifying, really, wasn't it, Mike? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was. It was like, here's yeah, Hiroshima, yeah. and then here's what they're capable of now. And they're <laughs> doing it sort like, of yeah. superimposed over like cities, weren't they? It was over Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles, how far out it'd go and the destruction yeah. that it could cause. So it's there's an online calculator yeah, where you uh, can you can put in what type of nuke and where in the world it hits, and it'll tell you how many casualties there's going to be. Yeah. yeah, they showed it, and it was like. So Who invented it, that? Brings it to sharp focus a bit, doesn't it? As to yeah. what that actually happened on a scale if it did hit a city sort of thing. Was it the so, the, the yeah, Russian? Is it the Tsar bomb, the Russian one that's the biggest? Mm. Yeah, something like that. And they, they showed that hit in Los Angeles, and it's like instantly three million dead, mm. just like that. Yeah, it's, it's terrifying. We had this same channel. Um, VFX artist revealed the true scale of the universe. Interesting. Yeah, the true pretty scale. big, I would guess. Yeah. Well, we did. How big is the universe actually? Was the video called? How big is the universe? Or how yeah. big is the. That's what it was, the universe. We did one where it ended yeah. up being. Did it end up being a cube by the end of it? And then it was, it was just like a sphere inside it. Ridiculous, it was wasn't it? Yeah. Mind boggling. Mm. Yeah. Let's check this out then. VFX artist reveals the true scale of the universe. Let's do it. Have you seen those videos that show the scale of our universe? They're pretty neat because they demonstrate just how much larger other stars in our galaxy are than our own sun. However, my problem with these videos is that we quickly lose context of scale because as each new star is introduced, they appear visually the same as the one before it. So we're just kind of left thinking, yeah, I guess we're pretty tiny in the scale of the universe, but I want to know just how tiny we are. So instead of using a scale that changes, in this video, it's going to be locked. And just like you can have miniature scale models, our scale is 1 to 190 million. That shrinks the universe down to a point where the Earth is the size of a tennis ball, and that makes the moon the size of a Nerf ball. Now ask yourself this question, how far away would they be from each other? Elbows bent just a little bit here. Right here, I'll tie the lock locket. Because it took the astronauts three days. That'll do. <laughs> there? Here. Actually, our little moon would be all the way over here, seven feet away. The real moon sits 250,000 miles from the Earth at its furthest point in orbit. And here's a fun fact. If you were to line up each planet in the solar system right next to each other, they could actually fit between the Earth and the moon. Next to Earth, we would put Mercury, Venus, and Mars, and then expand outwards to Jupiter, followed by Saturn, and then Uranus and Neptune. And you could even throw little Pluto in here for good measure. It's, it's just crazy that they actually fit there. And if you want to read more about this crazy cosmic coincidence, I've linked a really interesting article by astronomer Phil Plate. As you can see, even at the scale, Jupiter is pretty big. You could fit 1,300 Earths within the volume of Jupiter, but that is nothing compared to the sun. And for that, we have to go outside. Now at this scale, the sun would be half a mile away. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna put the sun right here. Ah, oh God, it's so bright. Okay, let's not actually simulate the brightness too. Let's bring that down. Okay, that's better. At this scale, the sun would be 24 feet wide, which is over half the width of this whole street. In fact, it's so big, the sun could fit 1.3 million Earths inside of it. That's pretty crazy. Now our sun is actually larger than most stars. As a yellow dwarf, it's bigger than 80% of the stars in the entire universe. Most stars are red dwarfs and they're about half the size of our sun. But even if the sun is above average size, it's certainly not the biggest. Let's look at Sirius. No, not Sirius, black, that's Sirius. It is the brightest star in the night sky because it is only eight and a half light years away combined with the fact that it is 20 times brighter than our sun. You can even see Sirius in most light polluted cities. Now a quick side note about these comparisons, I'm simply focusing on the diameters of each of these stars. And that doesn't necessarily correlate to how much mass a star has or how bright they appear because some of these stars have ballooned to such a huge volume that they appear absolutely massive like Arcturus. Arcturus is 26. 
it's pretty cool mm. how they do these isn't it yeah it is clever stuff mm. yeah it's, it's sort of a different way of doing it and i think obviously because they're visual effects artists mm. they can spend the time sort of making all this stuff properly for us to see yeah even stuff like that makes it really good just doing it on like a roof of a building mm. you know, it gives you a bit more perspective doesn't it yeah yeah really good what you've got though i think is with videos like this people are going to be more educated on the subject and more interested to yeah. learn about it Oh, definitely, than yeah. what they are from when we, were, when we were at school and what we were just reading in a book. It's just pictures, wasn't it? And that's yeah. it. But this, like I say, it just catches, this catches is how, your this imagination is how, a bit This more. is how education should be now going forward. Yeah, yeah make it interesting. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's no like doubt. if you were lucky enough to get a teacher that's just so switched on and young enough that he mm. kind of like is passionate about it, really intelligent, and teaches in a way mm. that gets people engaged. If you go places like Jodrell Bank around here and, and do yeah. the planetarium there, it's really interesting. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's great stuff to, to go and see yeah. and sort of like it, especially for kids. Yeah. I don't know, your kids are probably at the age as well, um, where they get real it, real good fun there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be great there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll around. take them at some yeah. point. It's a good idea, actually. <clears throat> times larger than our sun, yet it isn't even twice as heavy. At our tennis ball scale, it is 610 feet wide, which is about the length of two football fields. What is interesting about Arcturus is that it is flying in a different direction from all the other stars in our galaxy, and therefore it is hypothesized that it was actually formed in another galaxy that at some point in the last several billion years was eaten up by our own Milky Way. Zooming out, we get Rigel, which would be so large it'd be taller than New York City's Freedom Tower at 1,872 feet tall. That's pretty big. But even though it's so large, it's actually a tiny little baby star. And I actually mean that literally. It's only 8 million years old compared to our sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. That is the difference between a 100-year-old person and a 2-month-old baby. Except this baby is destined to explode in a supernova. Not all stars go supernova though. Our own sun, for instance, is gonna continue expanding until it's over a mile wide at our scale. Over the course of the next five billion years, it will turn into a red giant, 256 times bigger than it is right now. Hey, hey, no need to worry though, because only in about one billion years are we gonna lose all of our oceans thanks to the fact that they're gonna boil away. But here's a star that even puts that to shame. Wait, so that's global warming. The sun's getting bigger. And hotter. That's yeah, not what they're telling us. <laughs> Right, might even be sunny in Manchester one day hey. if you stick around for a few billion years. I think it might be a bit too sunny by the sound of it, but mm, a billion years. It's weird that there is a finite time scale on I know. the planet, I know. isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, it's not in our lifetime necessarily. No, no. it's interesting. Our space yeah. is just weird, isn't it? Mm. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. This star boasts a waistline that is over a billion miles wide. Your mama ain't got nothing on this. With Earth as a tennis ball, Betelgeuse would stretch over five miles end to end. It would be 10 times taller wow, than the tallest man. building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It is, however, considered to be really close to the end of its life and is very likely to go supernova within a million years. And when it does, the explosion will be so bright, it'll outshine the full moon and may last as long as a month. But Betelgeuse is not the largest star that we've found. That would that wow. be so? That would be seen from Earth then. <clears throat> Wait, it sounds bright. like it sounds yeah. like it would be. Yeah. But it will be able to like it sort of get here eventually, mm. anyway, wouldn't it? So yeah. Imagine if it was like a month of just not the sun doesn't go down essentially. Yeah, but it'd be some all kinds of shite going on, wouldn't they? It'd be everything before, yeah. so it'd be chaos, wouldn't Do it? Do you know the worst part about the, um, the, the the planets lining up and all that is all these nutcase. Um, uh, Astrology, astrology yeah. They're not, not astrology, because that's probably... Is it, is it called astrology? Astronomy is the one that's a science. Yeah. Astrology, astrology is, is the, the one that's like... Star signs and stuff. You're a Gemini, I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. Yeah. And if Mars is here and Earth's here, you're going to get lucky yeah. or you're not going to get yeah. lucky. You're born on this day, this is what your personality's yeah. like. Yeah. And yeah. Mystic Megs of the world, yeah. you mean. Mm. That's the one. When someone always says to me, what star sign are you? I just go, <laughs> don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> no comprende. <laughs> so what are, the, what are the two that don't ever mix? And if they say it's like Sagittarius and whatever, and then you ask them what they are, and then you just be the opposite and go, I'm out. Yeah. Based off your metrics, I'm not allowed to be near you. Mm, I wouldn't know what what they mean anyway. I, I don't have no idea. No, don't, don't matter know. when you're born, I don't think of it. No. Yeah, there's different personalities for every day, every mm. day of the year. And, yeah. and, Oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. You know, yeah, without absolutely. a doubt. Yeah. That honour lies with 
UI Scooty. <laughs> what kind of a name is UI Scooty? Astronomers think this might even be the largest star in our galaxy, and it's certainly the largest one we've ever found. Whoa. If it were to replace our sun, the surface would reach the orbit of Saturn. It would dwarf Manhattan at a staggering eight miles wide. Eight miles. Central Park is only two and a half miles long, so this is over three times longer than that. To put that into perspective, that is higher than the cruising altitude of all airlines. These stars are the size of cities, and here we are living on a tennis ball. Do you feel small yet? I do. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is a project I've been wanting to work on for quite some time, so I really hope that you've walked away with a better appreciation for the scale of our universe. Now, time for a word from our sponsors. Us! That's right, we've been working on some really cool designs such as this one that you can find in That's a cool video, though. Yeah, I enjoy stuff on space. Yeah, like it just it's blows pretty me good mind. to present it as well, like the way he yeah, does it. Does, it. Yeah. Pretty concise and explains it well. He's yeah. enthusiastic as well, isn't yeah. he? Which yeah, always good. Yeah. It's just nice to have that different way of looking at it, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. that that yeah, one that definitely. we watched, where things just grow, gets mind-boggling so yeah. quick that it's incomprehensible how big the big things are. Yeah, but when you when you take into the scale of the size of the Earth, there's a tennis ball there. Think about the size of the human and what you are, how irrelevant you are. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. it comes and down to the scale it. of things into space and the yeah. stars, it's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, with that, incredible. with the scale of all that, there's got to be something else out there. Oh, I, th I think yeah. so. Without hundred percent, got to be something. Oh, with the amount of stars about, there's mm. got to be somewhere that's lucky enough to have a planet nearby and yeah. be able to create. But life we, we seem to travel. We seem to travel that far with satellite technology and space technology. Yeah. We've not found anything yet. I think which it's kind of a little bit. That is, it's, it's that big. Yeah, it's it's yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, what's what's the thing where if you're like one degree off and you try and go from Earth to the Moon, you miss it by like a thousand miles or something. <laughs> Like, I, don't, I don't know what the numbers are exactly, but it's mm. some ridiculous thing like that. And if you think we send a satellite in the, out into the vastness of space, one degree that way or mm. that way is yeah, going to make mass, all yeah. the difference. Yeah. So the chances of finding something a million miles away from Earth is like... It's yeah. just a vast distance, isn't it? The yeah. I guess we just got to wait for them, right? <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. <laughs> They're already here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good though. Enjoy, enjoy yeah, that. Nice yeah, one, nice one. Yeah. Good. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers.